Blunders and mistakes. In chess, a blunder is a mistake that no one can excuse. Even one blunder and you're probably going to lose. In our vigilance to avoid blunders, sometimes we try to eliminate mistakes as well. For understandable reasons, we spend a lot of time trying to avoid blunders and minimizing mistakes. But if that is all we do, we have given up the chance to do something magical. If you're working on the frontier, if you're leading, creating or inventing, if you have signed up for mistakes, that's the price of innovation. After the fact, it's easy for an attempt at great work to look like nothing but a blunder. But it might simply be a mistake that we can learn from. Yeah, of course, if you put yourself in a space in which you can't make mistakes, can't lose, can't can't fuck up in the end, then uh, it is probably a bit too safe. It's probably a space to be in if you if you're not trying to create something great, if you're trying to create something that is not that is not um, expanding horizons that is small not something big new decisions i was wrong isn't something you hear very often particularly from people in power or folks who have gone out on a limb exposing a belief it's far easier to persuade someone to make a new decision based on new information that way they can be right now and they can also believe that they were right before Trading trust for attention. The old adage was always wrong. Say whatever you like, but spell my name right. And now it's even more of a trap. The temptation to get the word out is overwhelming. There is so much noise and so much hustle going on that we might believe that it's okay to trade our standards and principles and position for some attention, at least for a minute or two. The latest viral video is for an online dating site and it features Satan as one of their customers. Nicely short, sort of funny, with just the right amount of inside humor, there is no arguing that it got attention. But it burned trust. It established an image that contradicts the position they worked hard to earn for more than a decade. There have always been shortcuts to attention, but the only purpose of advertising of any kind is to cause action. And action only happens when there is trust involved. Shopping is not the same as buying. Just about everyone over the age of 15, anywhere in the world, engages in a market in some way. We need things and we buy them. That's not what shopping is. Shopping is the act of imagining what you might want. It's the thrilling but risky exchange of money for something that you've never purchased before. Something that might be better than you hope, but it might not. In some communities, shopping is so foreign and risky that it simply doesn't happen. Shopping is a cultural activity with styles and approaches varying depending on who you are and where you live. Shopping releases chemicals in our brain. In many cases, particularly with luxury goods, it's the emotional shift that we're actually paying for, not the thing we are buying. The trillion dollar industries that are based on shopping as a sport, as distinguished from buying what we need, are relatively new but have been around long enough that many of us take them for granted Normal activities that appear to have always been around. Money is a story. Your story is probably different from everyone else's. Our relationship with debt, savings and earning money is extraordinarily complex. Consumer credit has turned turned from a convenience and useful bridge into, for many people, a trap. Gift cards, garage sales and self-storage units start to reveal just how many layers we have built up around our commitment to shopping. In small doses for many people, shopping can produce happiness, but it doesn't usually scale. More stuff might not be the substitute for the things that we truly want. Which most often, and this is something that I add now, which most often, or quite always, is something that we can't even buy. It's emotions, it's things that we're wishing for. Maybe a a partner, something to live life with. Maybe it's happiness, maybe it is trust, maybe it is safeness or safety maybe it is certainty maybe it's knowing what tomorrow is gonna bring 
maybe it's understanding what yesterday was maybe it's feeling and knowing what to feel and why we are feeling but the relationship that we're having with money is also based on our parents and what we have seen as children and what we've seen in general what we've seen people um, do with money you know how they're using it in which way they're using it if they're using a lot of it for what they're using it what they're buying why they are buying these things you know what they're trying to achieve with their what it is just for pleasure what it is for creating something that's even better for making something new something better with better gear and so on uh, it truly is a complex thing but i think there is some there is some similarities to food you know buying things for the pleasure of buying things um is not smart it really is not and also eating even though you're not hungry just for the pleasure of eating isn't smart as well because you're gonna gain weight probably the persistence of hierarchy and status roles rem r e m was one of the most respected indie rock bands you would think that a group that somehow managed to treat the needle between between whatever authentic means to them and huge popular success could walk away from traditional measures of who's up and who's not. In a long ago Rolling Stone article, lead singer Michael Stipe or Steep said that he had never heard a song from Maria Carey or Maria Carey and in fact had just learned how to say her name. There's a difference between focusing on your lane and denigrating the other in your field in the same article bandmate michael mills expressed disappointment that even though they recorded at prince's studio in minneapolis he never stopped by to say hello or even invite them to the party on friday turtles all the way down turtles all the way up high school persists it's possible to use the status hierarchy as a sort of fuel a way to motivate yourself to push a little harder but it is also possible and far more resilient to use connection and possibility as fuel as well the best lesson of high school might be that everyone has a noise in their head everyone feels uncomfortable and everyone would appreciate a little kindness and respect and this is one of the reasons why i often communicate or try to communicate that we all can change something in someone we all can communicate something we all can we all can you know just to to be as specific as it can be say something to another person that is indeed going to change their life or at least their day or their second whatever it might be you know we can all say something whether it is a compliment whether it is just um you know whether it is speaking your gratitude for what this person did is doing did for you did for the other person and just the admiration you know of this person that you're feeling communicating that you know it must not necessarily be like a direct compliment you know this might even be kind of um wrong for the sake of a better word but yeah mo popular and cheap too butterfly hunting smart generous and kind the engram tracks words used in books over the last 200 years here is what a million authors and billion readers think kindness matters update i'm realizing that kind has more uh, homonyms than the other two words and yet the idea still resonates pilayo in spain recommends this alternative which makes it even more clear so kind was way more often used than smart and generous even though smart got more popular in, in recent years and is actually and actually surpassed generous in the 2000s by uh, quite a bit but yeah are you stalling i have a little wooden plague i think it's plague i don't know with those three words on it and of course 
the answer is often yes. If you're waiting on an unavoidable delay, then you're not stalling. If you're making things better in a way that the customer will notice, then you're not stalling. If you're finding that the spaces in between are giving you joy and sustaining you, then you're not stalling. But if you're holding back and looking for a reason why, and that reason is replaced by another reason, then you might be stalling. Don't wait, do something. Create something, make something out of your life. Do something that changes things. And I particularly like the line, if you're finding that the spaces in between are giving you joy and sustaining you, then you're not stalling. And especially sustaining you. Yesterday, um, on the 24th of December 2020, I wasn't in a particular good mood and I still am not, especially to the end of the day. And now it's also kind of the end of the 25th. Even though I'm able to rest and it is something that I clearly needed, as I've seen yesterday. Um, and I've, as I've actually also seen in the past few weeks, that I clearly need rest and that I clearly need some time for for thinking some time for actually remembering the past and working on the past and working on my perception of the past and working on how I feel about the past and in general working on how I feel about the things that are happening in my life because it just depends on that you know but yeah A paradox of community, belief, and reality. Belief happens when we combine community with emotion. It's a way for us to see and understand the world at the same time that we engage with some of the people around us. Belief is a symptom of shared connection and community makes us human. Reality, on the other hand, is widely experienced and consistent. Gravity doesn't care if you believe in it or not. It's still here. And that jar of jelly beans that has the same number of beans in it no matter how many times we count them. We believe when belief doesn't match our experience of reality, stress occurs. This stress can surprisingly make community stronger. There is very little community among people who believe that the earth is a sphere, no meetings or conversations of the round earth people. That's because you don't need belief to know that the earth is round. There is a long history of building community cohesion by encouraging members to ignore the facts of the world around them. The disconnect, between, the disconnect between what's out there and the emotions that lead us to believe something that isn't real can actually make a community tighter. Sometimes the disconnect between belief and reality is precisely the point. When a disconnect gets really large and the community becomes insulated, cults arise. But in our modern age, this stressful disconnect between belief and reality also makes it difficult to spread the word the outsider may be hesitant to sign up for the stress that belief in non-real things can cause, as more and more information is just a click away and as our culture fractures into a long tail of filter bubbles, the chasm between belief and reality become more profound, but beliefs change and reality persists and so the cycle continues. Entitlement fails. An attitude of entitlement doesn't increase the chances you'll get what you want, and it ruins the joy of the things you do get. Win or lose, you lose. The ocean is made of drops. That's easy to say, but hard to visualize. Even a paddle has more drops than we can count. It's got to be difficult to be a drop, and yet, what else could the ocean made be made of? The right answer. Which is better? Feeling like you were right the first time, or actually being correct now? When we double down on our original estimates, defend our sunk costs and really and rally behind the home team, we are doing this because it is satisfying to feel as though we were right all along. On the other hand, if the outcome is important and we are brave enough to learn, we can say, quote unquote, based on what we know now, we should change course because the other path is actually a better way to go forward. More often than not, there are moments when we are wrong. We can either acknowledge that we were wrong yesterday or we can curse ourselves by choosing to be wrong going forward. 
Flexibility in the face of change is where resilience comes from. Change your mind. Be able to change your mind. Acknowledge that you've been wrong. Understand that you've been wrong. Understand that you did wrong. Understand 